Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a very big, very advanced canister filter. Now inside this quite frankly gigantic box is a Hydra Filtron 1800 and although this one doesn't have a UV anywhere in it, it is marketed as having a four stage filtration process. Now normally we'd have mechanical biological, then chemical, in that order. But this one actually has something called Hydro Pure Technology, which as far as I can tell is basically some sort of like electrolysis sort of thing that releases ions to convert ammonia and nitrite and possibly even nitrate into less harmful elements or substances. I'm no chemist, so I can't quite understand how this works and I've, I've had a, a really good look online to see what people are saying about these and I'm still none the wiser. So I'm going to be asking for your help on numerous occasions with this one. But let's get it out of the box and I'll show you the way the water flows through this thing and explain what the various stages as it comes from the manufacturer are. Okay so at first glance this looks pretty much like any other external filter. But the primer is really quite strong and it's got a huge like rubbery paddle inside. And when you press that up and down you can actually feel the air coming out of there. It really does drag the air through so therefore it'll drag the water through to help it get primed. We've got a nice big inlet and outlet so that's not going to restrict the flow. And two of the four clasps that keep the top on actually act as handles. You see how they extend up there? And that allows you to lift it securely. That is a really nice touch. And then we've got the on-off switch for the Hydro Pure thingy there on the side. Right, let's get this off. These are actually very stiff because this is brand new. Hasn't had a chance to be worn in yet. I'll get on to this bit later because that is actually the last stage of the filtration. But basically our water comes in here, is that right? Yes, water comes in that one. And then it goes down this hole that's formed in the trays all the way to the bottom of the filter, rises up through the trays, and then once it comes up through the trays, it goes into here. But unfortunately, Alan who sent me this didn't send me the blooming cartridge that goes in here. There's a cartridge of special stuff that looks a little bit like carbon that slots in here. And when the hydro pure thing's on, this is the last stage of the filtration. This is the hydro pure unit. It basically passes a charge between these two plates, releases a load of ions or something in here to work its magic, and then the pump sucks the water up and blows it back to the tank. Okay, now that we've seen where the water goes, down here and up through the trays, I'll take these trays out and I'll explain what is in them. You know what? I'll take them out first and then explain what's in them because I'll be able to do it in order that way. Right, there's four nice big trays there. This is the bottom one. So that is what the water hits first once it's gone down the tube and starts to rise back up. This is something called 3DM Pro Filter Medium. But I'll get a big magnifying glass out and give you a close look at this. To me it looks like crushed shells but I've put vinegar on it and it doesn't bubble so I don't know what it is. It's, it's obviously not like calcium based but it looks very oceanic. Anyway, that normally wouldn't be in bags. You would take it out of the bags and put it in there. So that's what the water's meant to hit first. Then the water is meant to hit two coarse pads. Then it is going to hit another reasonable amount of that 3DM filter media. And then it's going to come up and hit something called 3DM beads. Now these look very similar to the Eheim, or not Mech, uh, Substrat Pro. Very similar to those, but they're a white colour. Then it's meant to hit a fine pad, 
then it's meant to go through a carbon pad into that hydro pure unit and then out to the tank. So you can see there we've got things a little bit cockeyed. All this is going to do, when you've got the fine pad on the top tray, and the water's flowing up, is collect all the fine muck in your media, making it very inefficient. Media will still work in a bit of muck, but you don't want it absolutely clogged. This is gonna, it's gonna mess up all of these trays. One, two, three, it's gonna mess up four trays, basically. And you don't really want your biological media getting hit with the dirtiest water first. Biological media really needs to be in pretty clean water, so you'd normally have that after the mechanical side, which would be your foams. So if you're gonna set this particular one up just with the stuff that comes with it straight out the box, this is what I would suggest. Put your coarse foam in the bottom tray. Remember it's in two parts, so you've got two bits of foam about an inch thick. Take the top one out, put the fine pad on top of that. That will ensure that all of the muck that's drawn out the tank is held below or in the bottom tray. Anything above that should stay quite clean because that's a decent pad. Not much is going to get past that. So you've got one of those spare. Then go with your bigger pieces of the 3DM media. One, two. So you've got two trays of biological media. And then go with the 3DM beads because these ones have a much tighter structure than these ones, so they would be last. You'd always go coarse to fine, whether it was the mechanical or the biological, so they're a much finer structure, much tighter packed. They would go in the top tray. As I say, that is very similar to the Eheim Substrat Pro. Then on top of that, put your carbon pad. Like that. Now you've got everything in the right order. You've got mechanical, biological, chemical. I don't know why it doesn't come set up like that. That always baffles me. Um, water polishing should be done before the water hits the media. I'm not going to bang on about it. I've said it probably a hundred times in a hundred different videos, but that's just the way it goes. Every water treatment plant, every sewage plant do that the same way. All the mechanical, then the biological, then the chemical. It's just the way filtration works. So setting it up that way will ensure that the biological media stays clean and effective. It'll ensure that all the muck is held in the bottom of the filter where it wants to be, which will make cleaning these much easier. At worst, you're just gonna have a fine dust on the top of the media. Take the trays out, give them a shake and a bucket of water. That will be enough to remove it. If you've got a fine pad on top of there, they're gonna be hellish clogged. I mean, you're literally gonna to have to tip the media out and manually clean it out, you know. Right, as I said, we're gonna have a close look at this media, so I'll get some out and I'll bring the camera in and I'll let you have a look at it, see what you think. I think it's a pretty good media, but it has got one fatal flaw. Right, there might be a few edits in this bit because it's pretty difficult to hold this stuff steady enough. But hopefully you can get a good idea of the structure of this thing. See what I mean about it looking like crushed shells and bits of sand and so on. And yet it doesn't bubble. When I drop vinegar on it, there's no fizzing. It doesn't disintegrate. It's a really weird sort of media. There's the bit that I dropped vinegar on. And hopefully you can see the tunnels a little bit easier on that one because it's still wet. It doesn't half look like little shells and bits of sand and that, doesn't it? It's a very strange one. It's almost like tiny little barnacles, you know? It seems to have a good structure though. However, that porous structure does come at a cost. It is pretty soft. So I'm not sure how long this stuff's going to last in a reasonably fast flowing canister filter. Especially if you need to keep cleaning it out if it's set up the way the manufacturer recommends. If this stuff gets taken in and out of the tray 
more than a few times you're going to be left with a lot of dust I'll just crack a bit in half and let you see inside it you can see it's pretty porous I mean I've dipped it in water and when I dropped vinegar on it it soaked it right up so it is a very porous media I'm just not sure how durable it is and just by way of comparison that is a piece of Biohome Ultimate you can see inside there's little pockets it's microporous and macroporous so it does support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria it's actually got a beautiful structure and it's pretty hard that's actually the inside of a bigger piece of Biohome you might be able to see the structure a little bit better there That's a more zoomed in version of that 3DM media. It is a very porous media, but as I say, I do have concerns about the durability. However, that 3DM stuff is not as brittle as this crappy Chinese stuff that's blighting eBay and blighting Amazon. This is all over online. You pick it up dirt cheap, and although it looks awesome from the outside, it is just dust. I mean literally dust. Surface area reading will be high because that's calculated by crushing something and spreading it out and because it's made of dust it will be high. The internal structure of that is just basically crap. Inaccessible rubbish. And a special shout out for you guys in the US this is Lava Rock. A lot of people in the US rave about Lava Rock without actually cracking it open and having a look inside now I smashed about 20 pieces up and this was by far the best. It looks really good. Internal structure looks beautiful. Until you realize that most of those things that look like tunnels actually don't go anywhere. They are sealed bubbles. So until you actually smash this in half, that surface area inside there is not available. See the outside of the rock looks lovely and knobbly, you think, my god, all those tunnels, they've got to go all the way through the media, it's a beautiful sort of stuff. That's the reality of it, the tunnels don't go anywhere, they're just sealed bubbles. However, lava rock is very, very hard, it lasts a hell of a long time. Externally, it's got a beautiful structure, and as far as processing the ammonia and nitrite from the supported aerobic bacteria that's going to live on and in parts of this it does a cracking job so it is a good DIY media just don't expect to achieve a full cycle when you're using lava rock anyway I'm not going to go through all the different types of media again I've already done that in a video called looking inside filter media which I will put in the video description that one is a very important video hasn't really had many views compared to some of my other ones but that one basically shows what makes a good filter media internal and external surface area and I use a microscope in that one so you can actually really really see the internal structure yep these balls are almost exactly the same as the Substrat Pro but the 3DM cubes oh god got a lot of dust in there I mean you can see there's a load of dust in there and this has barely been handled it's not going to last long in this filter. It is not going to last long. It does look like a good media. I'm not sure how long it'll last. We're going to take all of this out because I know that the Biohome Ultimate works towards a full cycle in a canister filter. There's a load of dust in that one. Okay, now this is where you guys come in because I really need you to share your experiences of this filter because it is quite a unique sort of filter. It's got a sort of filter media that I've never seen before. It's got that HydroPure thing that I am not familiar with. I understand how it should work, but looking online, I cannot find any concrete proof that it actually does work. So I could do with reports. If the reports online just seem to be all over the place. It would be lovely to drag proper user reviews and just brief reports about how you've found using this thing over the last six months or a year, two years or whatever into one video comment section so please if you can spare a few minutes do that for the benefit of people who are contemplating buying one of these filters because as far as the construction goes the construction is very very good it shifts 1800 liters an hour which is a 
a fair old bit of water. It's got that HydroPure thing that may or may not work. Should work if it's kept clean enough. Don't know enough about this one, so some of my descriptions of it are going to be a little bit vague, like that filter media. In the bio home, I know exactly how it's made. This, I don't. The Chinese one, I know exactly how that's made. It's basically just made from the dust that's compacted. You put in a kiln. Um, this is something different altogether. And the strange thing is, the manufacturer doesn't actually claim that this will support anaerobic bacteria. It's all just it's all aerobic. It just mentions the ammonia and nitrite. Then again, if they did mention that it also supported anaerobic bacteria, would anybody question them on it? A lot of manufacturers just claim anything. At least with the media side of things, they seem to have been realistic in their description. Not sure about that electronic part though. You guys can help me with that. And bear in mind that Hydra also do a range of internal filters which are basically just that electronic part to neutralize ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Again, the reports for those internal filters are all over the place. Some people say they work. Some people say they work for a little while and stopped working. Some people say they never worked. Some people say they put them in and nitrate actually went up. So, God, if I was looking to buy one of these things, I wouldn't know where to start, which is why hopefully this video, the comments below from you guys will help people. Certainly you are gonna be able to help people more than I can help them just by making this video. Anyway, enough of me slavering on. We've taken the media out. We've got the bottom tray set up with the coarse foam and the fine pad. Ideally it would want coarse, medium and fine, but the coarse is quite thick. It's going to catch a lot of the muck. The fine is quite thick as well, so the crap should all get taken out in there. So that gives us one, two, three trays for media. They're a decent size as well, so we're going to get a canny bit of media in here. But remember, I'm going to be using the Biohome Ultimate because that's what I have, that's what I know works. If you just want to use stuff that comes with it or anything else, by all means put that in and let me know how you get on in the comment section. That will help other people. Right, we've easily got 1.7 kilos in there. So because we've got three trays full of media, that gives us five kilos, which for you guys in the US is 11 pounds in total. That little handle supports that very well. As you can see, it's beautifully balanced. I do like that. Certainly strong enough. And it just tucks away as well. I like that. And when I drop those in, there's actually quite a satisfying, not a click, but like an indication that the trays have actually locked in pretty well. They do fit together very well, which will, of course, minimize the bypass. So we've got mechanical, biological. Then on top of that, You've got the fine carbon pad that came with the filter. You don't necessarily need carbon, but it fits in there pretty well, so you might as well use it. Then we've got the grid, and then the head can go back on. It really snaps shut with some sort of vigor. God. <laughs> And they're pretty hard to get off as well. I mean, if you were kind of old or enfeebled in any way, you know, you didn't have much strength, I don't think you'd be able to get these off. So really all we've done with this one is just put the foam and fine pad in the correct place and replace the filter media to something that I personally know works. That's not to say that this stuff will not work because structurally it looks very good. And I'm really scratching my head trying to work out what it is. It just looks like a conglomerated coral. Almost like coral sand that's kind of been stuck together, you know? It is meant to be pH neutral, which of course coral sand isn't. So that kind of rules that out if the pH neutral thing is true. Now because this thing has got those Hydra Pure cartridges in with the Kata Media or whatever the hell it is, if you do achieve a full cycle, is that down to the electrical part, that catamedia stuff, and the, like, the electrolysis and all the release of all these ions and everything? Or is it purely down to the structure and the ability of the media? It's gonna be impossible to tell because 
If you've got enough of this media, it should give you a full cycle without the need for that electronic part. In fact, well, basically that's what the biohome does in people's filters. You know, it gives them a full cycle, no need for that electronic part. As I say in my video description and pinned comment towards the bottom, we are all on a long path of learning and there's no such thing as an expert. I'm certainly no expert. I know how filters should work, I know how to set them up, I can recognise good media from bad media. I think the structure of that media is good. I'm just not sure about the structural integrity of it. I don't know much at all about the electronic part of this, that HydroPure technology. Again, as I mentioned before, I can see how it should work, but without honest reports from you guys, the people who have actually used these things long term, I don't know whether that works at all. But it bloody well wants to work because this filter currently is 299 English pounds, which is a hell of a lot of money. And if we just compare this to a more budget one, which would be the Oil Pond Solutions 2000 EF or the Sun Sun. 304 which will hold five kilos of media you could buy one of those cheaper filters and five kilos of biohome ultimate for about 150 quid that's half the price of this so this wants to work it really does need to work for 300 quid as you know in this video I don't run these filters because they're not mine this one was sent to me by Alan thank you very much Alan the ones in subsequent videos will be sent by other people, so I do not use these things long term. I use this series of videos to basically show you how the water flows through a specific filter, how much media it'll take, how they come set up from a manufacturer, what if anything can be done to improve them, and I give you my views on the actual construction quality. Now construction quality of this, I think is very good. It is really well made. Trays are well designed, they're very simple. Everything, now that it's been swapped around a little bit, works in the right way. Water comes down, we've got mechanical, biological, chemical, then we've got that hydropure thing, whether we need it or not. So it all is together in the right way. And as you know, I generally give my opinion on the filter media that comes with these filters. Generally, the filter media is of a low standard. It's normally just ceramic rings which are pretty crap sometimes you might get a reasonably nice scented glass ring but they're fairly flawed because they've got that big hole through the middle so it's all aerobic everything's aerobic this is one of the first ones that i've seen that's got a good structure it's accessible it's very porous it's just that softness issue of the structure if you're careful with it this could be a very, very good media, you know, I just, I just don't know. It's certainly the best one so far that I've seen in any filter, as far as I can remember. I do have a terrible memory, but I'm racking my brains now. Now, I don't think anything has come close to this so far. So I've mentioned the flow rate, which was 1800 litres per hour, which is... 474 gallons per hour for you guys in the US. Obviously, that is the maximum flow rate. By the time you get the pipes attached, all the media in, you could take a good 40% off that. And obviously, when it's sitting below the tank and it's pumping up to the tank, that does reduce it. So all those factors come into play. Take 40%, possibly even 50% off what the manufacturer states this will pump. But even if it's only pumping half, of the stated output it's only doing say 900 liters per hour that's a canny flow at the tank you know that that's a it is a good flow and i think with a nice wide inlet and outlet and the nice wide pipe going down to the bottom nice wide trays you shouldn't get much restriction in the flow with this particular filter so on that front it looks very good we managed to fit five kilos of biohome ultimate in there aiming for a full cycle which would be zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and low, possibly zero nitrate. That is a full cycle. Um, that would make it suitable for a normally stocked tropical tank of around 500 litres, 
which is for you guys in the US about 132 US gallons so you should get a full cycle from it for a tank of that size if it's a heavily stocked tank like a goldfish tank or a predator tank a Malawi tank um, or just a big cichlid tank or if it's just heavily stocked with community fish you could halve that so I would say this one would give a full cycle for a tank of around 250 litres which for you guys in the US is about 66 US gallons. Now the manufacturer says that this is suitable for tanks between 200 and 800 litres so in reality 500 litres for a normally stocked tank that's pretty much in the middle of what they recommend that is realistic. Interestingly on the box it makes no mention of nitrate reduction um, not for the media and not for the hydro pure thing it just mentions ammonia and nitrite ammonia and nitrite are so easy to control I mean even plastic media in here would support enough aerobic bacteria so I'm not quite sure what market they're aiming at here you know even a suitably sized cheap filter with crap media in should ensure that you get zero ammonia and zero nitrite unless your tank's horrendously overstocked or you just don't do the maintenance on it it's the nitrate that's a difficult one to shift and I initially thought that's what that hydro pure thing was there for but obviously it isn't it's almost like they're saying it'll process ammonia and nitrite just like every other filter but better but if you've got zero ammonia zero nitrite in an expensive filter or a cheap filter which one is better? The one that has cost 300 quid or the one that costs 75 quid? You be the judge of that. This one, however, should process the nitrate because it's got the biohome ultimate in. All right, there's probably been about six million edits in this because I have rambled something terrible in this video because it's not a straightforward filter. It's got media that kind of threw me a little bit because I was quite impressed with it. It's got the electronic thing in the top that I understand but I don't understand so I need help with this one and I'm not the only one who needs help I think people looking to get good information on this need reports from people who've used them long term so, so please anybody who's watching this has used one of these long term put your reports in the comment section because that is so important so important Hopefully I'll have a more coherent video in the next episode. <laughs> so apologies if I was a little bit vague or rambling in this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm aware of the fact that I've probably made a bit of a balls of explaining just how this thing should work with regard to the electronic part of it, that HydroPure technology. So what I'll do for you guys, I'll put a link to the manufacturer's video on this filter range in the video description and also in the pinned comment. They are much better placed to explain exactly how this HydroPure stuff works because I'm not a moron, but I'm not a scientist. My background is more in biology and ecology than it is in chemistry, because chemistry tended to involve a lot of symbols and a lot of maths, and my brain doesn't think like that. So I do struggle with that. You guys go over there to their video, take a look, see what you think, come back here, scroll down the comments, hopefully people who've used this particular filter will have put their reports in the comments, those comments will be undoctored, I won't take any of them off, whether they're reporting good or bad, because basically I just want truthful, genuine reviews of the filters that you've actually used you know so you guys are much better placed to do that than me so the comment section should be where you will find good useful information on this particular filter that's basically what this series is all about that's why i just let you guys have the free reign of the comment section you just get on put what you think about each particular filter in that comment section that's what it's there for